Welcome everyone, I'm Laura Shu, author of the Lightroom blog and Lightroom workshops on video at laurashu.com. In this video, I'll talk about what's new in Lightroom 5.4, as well as the accompanying releases of Lightroom Mobile for the iPad and Lightroom WebView. The Lightroom 5.4 release has the typical bug fixes, new camera support, and new lens profiles that you can read about on my blog. But the big news is what's been added to support Lightroom Mobile. From here in Lightroom on my desktop, I can now choose to sync collections of photos to my iPad. On my iPad, I can do basic work on my photos, and as I do it, my work is automatically synced back to my desktop catalog. I can also view these synced collections of photos out on the web and share the link with others. I'll show you this in action in a minute, but let me first point out that while Adobe is starting with Lightroom Mobile for the iPad, they do plan to also release it for the iPhone later this year, and they'll then follow up with an Android app. Now, rather than show you how cool it is before I tell you what it costs, I'll say now that the Lightroom Mobile iPad app, Lightroom WebView, and unlimited syncing of photos between your desktop and these applications is available at no additional charge to subscribers of Adobe's Creative Cloud program. And this is the only way that you can access these new features. Now, in my opinion, this makes Adobe's Creative Cloud Photography Program deal even more compelling. For $9.99 a month, you get the most recent versions of Lightroom and Photoshop, Lightroom Mobile, as well as other Creative Cloud features. Note that you can try it first with a free 30-day Creative Cloud trial. Okay, let me show you the highlights of how this works. I'll first, here on my desktop, draw your attention to the identity plate I'll click on it and you'll see that this is where you sign in to your Adobe account. And you can click on learn more to find out about the 30-day trial. Next, this little switch here is what allows you to use the sync features in Lightroom 5.4. The features are built into everybody's Lightroom 5.4, but only if you signed in with an account and turned on that switch can you actually access them here. Now we can sync collections of photos to the iPad, not folders of photos. So I've created a New Mexico collection here of some photos that I want to sort through on my iPad. And to have Lightroom sync them to my iPad, I've simply checked the box to the left here. This little symbol means that they've been synced to my iPad. And I see that symbol on each photo here. I've created another collection of puppy snapshots from various folders up here. I'll click on the box here and the sync will start. Up here in the status bar in a minute, we'll see that it's syncing the 17 photos. Now, it's not copying your 10 or 20 megabyte RAW or JPEG original files over to your iPad. It's using smart previews, which were introduced in Lightroom 5.0. They're smaller RAW proxy files or placeholders for your originals. They're still pretty big in terms of pixels, at 2,560 pixels, but rather than being 10 or 20 megabytes, they'll be one or two megabytes. So that's what's being copied up to the cloud. Then on your iPad, as you need a particular photo, the smart preview is being downloaded to your iPad. The sync is not fast because they're not going directly over your household wireless connection from your computer to your iPad. They're going up to the Adobe servers, presumably in California, and then down to your iPad. I'm going to switch over to my iPad now, and I'll click on the Lightroom mobile app, which you'll find in the Apple Store and is free. And if this is your first time in the app, you would have to sign into your account, but I've already done that. We can see my two collections here, and if I had more, I could click and scroll down. By the way, anytime you see this red dot, it means that my finger is touching my iPad screen, and as you see the dot moving, my finger is moving. Let's go into the New Mexico collection. So we have grid view for a particular collection, I can do a two-finger tap to start seeing information about my photos. First, I see the badges associated with it. Then I can double tap again to see exposure information, and then even more information. I'll double tap again. I'll select my first photo, and we'll go into loop view. In loop view, I can also double tap to toggle through information. So histogram on the right, photo info on the left, double tap, just the photo info, just the histogram, and then back to seeing no information. Now there isn't extensive functionality in here at this point. You can assign pick and reject flags, and you can do some basic develop work. 
but this app is definitely going to grow over time. To assign a pick flag, I would simply swipe up on the screen or down for a reject. Go to the next photo, make a decision on that one, etc. Now I'm going to open up the film strip here and I'll go to a photo that I want to do some develop work on. The first thing I want to do is convert it to black and white. That's done in the preset area, which is the third section here. We have available not our custom presets, but all of the presets that Lightroom comes with. So I'm going to go into the black and white presets, and you can see that we have previews available with them. I'll choose the green filter. I've kind of experimented with these in terms of where I want to start. And then I'll click outside of that. I think while I'm in the presets, I'm going to come over to the effect presets, and I'm going to vignette this photo. Next, I'm going to go to the basic panel controls. That's the second icon here. So as I scroll from left to right down here at the bottom, you'll see all of the basic panel controls. I'll add some more contrast. So I clicked on the contrast box, and then I can slide the slider here. Note that you can also double tap on a slider to reset it, or just double tap on the box to reset it. But let's go with some positive contrast, and I'll bring the highlights down here. Now, I do want to crop it. So I'm going to select the fourth tool here. As I tap and drag, I can twist the photo to level it out. Notice that I can select specific aspect ratios if I wanted a square, for example. I can undo any step with this button down here in the bottom right. Now I'm going to go ahead and click and drag and twist it, and then I'll put the crop tool away by clicking back on it. To see before and after, I can triple tap on the photo. So there's before and there's after. Now, as I'm changing this photo, the work is not automatically being synced back to my desktop catalog. That happens when I go to my next photo. If I want to force it to sync right now, I can come up to the top right, click on the little plus, and say Sync Now, and my work will be synced over. So let's go over to my desktop catalog and take a look at this photo. So the work is automatically up to date on my computer. Now, this wasn't immediate. I did pause and wait for that to happen. But realistically, you're not going to be working with your iPad right next to your computer. You're not going to need instant updates. Now, I realized that I didn't show you that the flag work that I did also transferred over. So I'm going to type G to go back to grid view. I happen to be in collapsed view, so I'm not seeing my flags. I'm going to type J so I can see my flags. So all of this seamlessly synced over from my iPad. Let's go back to the iPad now. And I'm going to move out of this collection by hitting the back button here. Let me point out to you that if you click on your name in the top left, you get into settings. And I want you to see specifically that there's a gesture shortcuts library here. So if you don't remember what I did to get before and after, the triple tap, those are listed in the gesture library. So notice that you also choose to just sync while you're using Wi-Fi. OK, I'm going to hit my name here again to collapse that. Another great thing about Lightroom Mobile is that we can use it to capture and upload all of our camera roll photos. I don't take a lot of photos with my iPad. I'm really looking forward to this when the version for the iPhone comes out. But let me show you how it works here on the iPad. I'm going to create a new collection by clicking on the plus here in the top right. And I'll call this iPad Camera Roll. I'll say OK. And I want to add from the Camera Roll, so I'm going to click right in the center of this new collection. And I just turned around and took a few uh, puppy snapshots a minute ago. So I want to add all of these. The secret here is to hold your finger down until you get this menu. Choose Select All, and then in the top right, the check mark. So those photos are being added to this collection in Lightroom Mobile here. Now the process of adding these seven photos was pretty slow. I paused the video. But the great thing is that not only are these snapshots now in my Lightroom collection on my iPad, but if I jump over to my desktop Lightroom catalog and I open up this new collection set from Lightroom Mobile, which contains collections that were created on my iPad, I now have my collection of puppy snapshots automatically on my desktop computer and in Lightroom. In terms of where they're stored on my computer, that shows here in the Folders panel under this Laura's iPad Device section. So they're stored in a place in my Pictures folder. I can always now select these photos. I'll go to Grid View, do Control or Command A to select all, and drag them into another folder, a permanent location for these photos. 
and they're now in this folder. I'm going to switch back over to Lightroom Mobile to show you one more camera roll feature and then a few more items that I'd like to mention. Now we created this new iPad camera roll collection and then selected the seven photos that we wanted to add from our camera roll into it. I'm going to click on the three dots in the bottom right corner of the collection and I'm going to set this collection to auto import. By enabling auto import, anytime I take a photo with my iPad camera, it will be added to this collection and then automatically synced to my desktop computer. And the little camera symbol to the right here indicates this. I truly can't wait until this gets to the iPhone. I'd pay $10 a month just to have my photos from my iPhone camera roll automatically appear in Lightroom on my desktop. Now as you go to and work with photos here on your iPad, Lightroom Mobile is pulling the previews and information about your photos down from the cloud. But sometimes you're going to want to be able to work on photos on your iPad when you don't have access to the internet. If that's going to be the case, for example, you're going to be on a plane trip, you'll want to click on these three dots in the bottom right corner of any collections that you want to have access to offline and choose Enable Offline Editing. Lightroom Mobile will then download the smart previews and all the information for all of these photos so that it doesn't have to access the cloud. Depending on how many photos you're enabling offline editing for, it may take up a fair amount of space on your iPad. But it is an option. When you're back online, you can always choose to disable offline editing and that extra information will be deleted from your iPad and kept in the cloud. Okay, there's two more things I want to show you really quickly in Lightroom Mobile. I realize this video is going on pretty long. First one is within a collection. I'm going to select a collection and up here in the top center, I just want to show you that you have the ability to change the sort order here and you also have the ability to filter based on flag status. So if you just want to see your picked flags, for example, I'm going to click out of that. The last thing is sharing photos. Up in the top right, I'll click on the share button and then share dot dot dot. I can click to select photos that I want to share. Then I'll click on the check mark in the top right and I'll get the Apple share dialog here. So I can text them, email them, post them on Facebook, etc. I'll click out of that. Okay, so there are lots of other little details that I could show you here in Lightroom Mobile but I've given you a really good feel for the functionality that we've got in version 1.0.0. It's certainly not as much as I'd like to see over time. For example, I want to see rating stars, the ability to keyword, some more develop options, etc. But I think the Adobe team has gotten off to a great start, particularly since this is free to me as part of my Creative Cloud subscription. Before I conclude this video, I'll hop over to the web to show you Lightroom Web View, which also comes as part of your subscription. I'll go to lightroom.adobe.com and I've been here before, so I'm already logged in, but that would be your first step. So I see the exact same collections that I synced to my iPad. I can click on a collection to see thumbnails. I can click on the thumbnails to see individual photos. There's not a lot of functionality out here. I can change the sort order. I can filter based on flag status, play a slideshow, and then also share. So this can be a great way to share collections of photos with clients or with friends without having to create a web gallery or upload to Flickr or another site. You'd click on that sharing button and then you would share this URL with your clients or friends or you could post the URL to social media sites. So this concludes the overview of what's new in Lightroom 5.4, Lightroom Mobile, and Lightroom WebView. Visit my website at lauraschuh.com and sign up for newsletter updates so that you're informed when I have new blog posts covering new features or ways to use these tools or updates that come in the future, as well as to be informed of free webinars and other tutorials. If you're on YouTube, click on subscribe to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm Laura Shue.